Hey there, I uh, thought I would just, I, mean, I haven't put a video up in a while, so I thought maybe I'd just do a really rough cut and throw this up here. This is uh, my prep using Scabbard for a game session, right? So um, I, I'm 100% virtual, I use a VTT, I use Foundry VTT for my uh, virtual tabletop, I used to use Roll20, but I try to get everything organized inside Scabbard so that I can uh, think through the game. And so I thought I'd walk you through my process and yeah, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but I thought I'd show you what it looks like inside. So basically I, I'm gonna flip over here to my um, uh, my my scabbard campaign, so you can kind of see what I do. I first thing I do is I create a session log. So this is actually a session log. You can see the event category right there, session log, and you can see number twenty five. So uh, that's how many session logs I've gotten done, not how many actual games we've had, because sometimes I fall behind and I end up. Um, catching up. So what I do is this is a place for me to keep notes for the session we're going to have today for today's game, right? And um, uh, so what I do is I actually go into the uh, secrets section of this and I write my notes, all right? Sometimes I pull things over from my last game and this probably looks like a lot, um, but I, I some of the stuff I've cut and pasted uh, over from other games because we didn't get to it, right? So if we didn't get to something, I'm going to pull it over from the last session log. And I keep it in the secrets here um, so uh, nobody can see it but me. And then I will put in the highlights and notes right here. So how do I get organized? Okay, so um, we are starting in a dungeon right now. We're in a actually a, an ancient temple. And so they finally got into one of these key rooms. It's been a bunch of puzzles and some big fights and things like that. So I just bullet point the big events that I think might happen during this game uh, based on you know what the ne next rooms are and that sort of thing. So investigate the statue room, right? You've got that in there. I have uh, all my notes here for the statues and what they represent. I actually have a... Um, link to an article that they might need because they're, they're gonna need it. There's a puzzle in the room where they're gonna have to figure out the symbols of the gods in order to open this door. So I have a link there into that. But I basically, all I'm trying to do is get together any notes for that room, uh, mention as many things that I can because it's gonna automatically link them, right? Uh, you know, Scabbard's gonna automatically try to find that in my campaign and try to do an auto link in there. I've got the C puzzle perceptory threshold and uh, then I've got the treasure room where I've got uh, the loot chest, which I've actually put into Foundry. So my actual loot chest in Foundry, and that way I can just quickly drag the um, the the loot over to their characters. But I have a little note here that you'll that they also find these ancient amulet symbols of each of the new gods. Blah blah blah. You don't know anything about Cambi. You don't need to. The main thing is it's notes for me, and they're written in the GM section. And um, and then I've got this uh, this little message they're gonna find from one of the NPCs. I've got, uh, here's what's gonna happen if they uh, mess around with some of the stuff in the room, namely if they, they move a gym, it's going to activate the big stone golems and my fifth level players are going to have to, player characters are gonna have to fight a stone golem, which is not fun. Uh, so we'll see what they do with that. And, and that's basically my notes for the game. I don't know if we're going to get to all this. And if we get to more than this, no big deal. I will vamp. I will, I mean, we will just improv our way through the next sections of it. And, and that's pretty much it. So after the game or during the game, I'll try to keep some notes right here. Sometimes my, uh, my players who are insiders on this page will be able to go in here and add that in. And, uh, and they'll be able to look through that. And uh, if I'm worried about them looking at the secrets, my players are pretty good. I can always control X that and put it down here in the GM only secrets. And that way nobody can see it but me, right? Uh, so here we are, then I go into my um, I, my connections. So if I want a quick access to an article, I go into connections here and I try to think of everything that I possibly can that's gonna have anything to do with it. If I've made a room, which I have in several of the cases here settings, I've got that listed out. Several of the puzzles that we're using are listed there on those pages. So I put that in there, the general location to below the 12. I've got some groups that are mentioned here. One of them is not actually a participant. There's not really a great connection for, I just need a connection to this ancient group that doesn't exist anymore because it's part of one of the puzzles. So I put them in there as a participant, even though they're not. Then I got the name of all the characters, of course, uh, the, the PCs. And then my NPCs, I've got those listed there as well, just so I can click on them quickly. I also have, uh, sometimes I'll put a link to the month of the year. I have my own game calendar, which is kind of ridiculous homebrew stuff. Um, and uh, and then I've got the folder that I stick all this in, which is the Lost City of Koritan. That's the name of my campaign. 
and, and that this is a session log. If there's a specific loot item that I've created inside uh, um, uh, Scabbard, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, only if it's really campaign oriented do I create a loot item in there. Like, I don't just grab stuff like... You know, if it's a, a plus one sword, it's not going to be in the in the in, in scabbard. But if it's something more legendary or something like that, where I've got a specific story for it, then that's well, link will be in there too. All right, so that's the next thing I do. So first thing is I write my notes. Next thing is I do my connections. The beauty of that is now I can go over to the TOC, the table of contents, and I can quickly click on these things. I can also quickly make notes, right? So if a uh, player starts talking about something, you can see it's got the quick edit right here. I just click those three buttons. Uh, I can I can edit that and uh, add that in. So if one of the characters mentions something about their history or something like that that they want to keep, I can help them add that in or they can add that in later. Um, I can also go to the folder, look more uh, about my folder there, and then I can edit these rooms. Uh, I can quickly pull that up. Like I don't even have to change pages. That's the beauty of this, right? So the, the new quick edit feature that was created by uh, the creator of Scabbard is so beautiful when you're running a game because you can click on it and I can quickly pull up this puzzle, right? That I've already got created here and I can look at it in detail and I can edit it. I can look at the secrets for it or the description of it and all that. And uh, I just think it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. The, the new quick edit feature is a wonderful thing. Oh, uh, almost forgot. One of the coolest features in Scabbard is the proper noun detector. You can call it the scanner, whatever you want. I call it like the easy button. So uh, let me show you what that looks like. So if I go into my uh, session that I've been working on, right? So I'm going to go up here. I've already, you, know, you remember, I, I wrote out all this great stuff for my game. Well, I'm going to scan that. It's just this little button up here. Sometimes it does it automatically, but uh, if you don't have it set to do it automatically, no big deal. You just click the scan button. And um, when I click that there, it's going to give me all the proper nouns that I may not have any entries for. And maybe I want to create an entry for this, or maybe I don't. For example, let's look at Lady McDivitt right here. So I have a Lilibet McDivitt, but in this article, I called her the Lady McDivitt. So uh, no big deal. I'm going to make that an AKA, also known as Alias, and that's going to create an alias for Lilibet McDivitt. And now uh, that's taken care of. Okay, so that cleaned up there. Ooh, I, I might want to create one here, the Storage Facility Obelisk right there. The Storage Facility is actually going to be a location. Do I Am I going to write a whole lot about that? Is it going to be something that comes into the game a lot? Mm, probably not so I don't know if I'm going to worry about that I already have one perceptory threshold and uh, aka you can see the TOT perceptory th threshold so I'm going to create an o aka for that um, vitals message gamlier gamlier mage breaker is right there and I do want to create an aka for him for gamlier that way I can just write gamlier and it'll link it up instead of having to write out the full uh Gamlier Magebreaker. The, the Uakaton. The Uakaton is an Allosaurus. Uh, and I made up this funny name because I thought it'd be kind of funny to just throw in this random name of a creature they have to watch out for. They're, they get this message, oh, be careful of the Uakaton when you're traveling through this area. And it's really just going to be an Allosaurus or maybe a, a like a, a scaled down Tyrannosaurus Rex. And uh, and so, do I really want to do that? Do I want to make the Uakaton inside... Uh, um, Scabbard, sure, yeah, that'll be kind of fun because then I can bring up the picture of the Allosaurus and show them and I can do that right there. So we'll go ahead and create one, the Oakaton, a giant, um, ancient, no, it's not ancient, a giant, uh, pr um, carnivorous lizard. Uh, and I'll put more in there. I'm going to create a character for that. We'll create it. Um, and uh, its connection will be a participant of. Oh, no, antagonist of. I like that. The Uakaton. There we go. And I can create that later. Uh, Makanta, actually, I should have Makanta region in here. So I'll make that an alias. Uh, Baylor should be in there. Baylor the Ravager is an ancient god, so we'll make that an alias. All right, so like I said, that's the easy button. If you haven't uh, checked this part out of Scabbard, it is one of the coolest features. You will not find it anywhere else in any other RPG campaign manager. You do not have an Excel file that will do this. You don't have a Google Sheet that will do this. This is one of the coolest 
free features, any level of campaign you purchase in Scabbard. And if you don't know already, I am not a paid advertiser for Scabbard. I am just an evangelist. I love what it does because it made my life so much easier uh, as a GM. So hopefully you'll, you'll check this out. Then you're just going to click the X button and, uh, and, and it'll exit out of that real quick. So exit out. And then if I refresh, you'll notice... I've got, should have the Iwakatan in here now as a new participant. There's the Iwakatan right there, antagonist, the Iwakatan. All right, so that's pretty much the whole prep that I go through. And take some time, you know, I have to think through what was going on in the last game. And one of the things that I do with my session logs is you'll see my session logs, I use the next event of feature or a next event or next event of feature in the connections. So you can see in my connections, I've got the a prior session log listed there as the next event of. And uh, and so that way, if I forget something from the last game, I can click over to it. I can go look at that last session log and any notes that I had there and take a look at what was written in um, during that game. This is a pretty thorough one that I wrote up. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's bullet list. It's whatever I feel like I have time for because this is, this is my fun, right? I'm the GM. This is my fun, so I really do enjoy that. And, and I can go, you can see I can just sort of cycle back through all of my session logs, um, each one, one right after the other. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, allows me to really keep track of the campaign. And I use session logs as the basic organizing um, block of a campaign. You know, I've talked about this sort of philosophically about uh, what is the basic building block of a campaign. Some people think it's locations and a map and characters and stuff like that. The basic building block of a campaign is game night, right? That's how you build a campaign, game night by game night by game night. And then game nights can be sort of collected into uh, the next building block of a campaign, the next larger container, if you will, which is the adventure. The next building block of the campaign, I think, in my mind, is the uh, is, is the, the campaign itself, right? So you can have sub-campaigns and smaller campaigns and things like that, but I think the building blocks are pretty simple. Game night, adventures, which is a series of, who knows, could be three to 12 game nights, and then a whole campaign, if it's a long-term campaign, in my case, it's a long-term campaign, three years running now. So all those adventures add up to um, a campaign where the, there's a big bad evil guy that's going to be at the end, and it may take a couple years to get through it. In the case of this, it, it could easily take a couple years to get through this campaign. But the adventures are what give our my players a sense of progress. When they accomplish an adventure, I, I do milestone leveling. There is a level involved usually. Uh, sometimes not, but most of the time, if there's a, you know if there's a series of games and it's a pretty big conclusion, like the, we, our last level happened because they they found a key clue to the lost city of Coritan, which is the name of my campaign. So when they got that clue, they got a level, and they go back to the big town, big desert town that's kind of their headquarters, and they trained up for a little while. We had some fun adventures there. That series of adventures that was going on in town is ending now in the Temple of the Twelve, back out in the jungle. When this finishes. Tonight is level night, so that's the biggest reward for the evening besides some, some key loot inside the temple. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a really short video. I just wanted to walk through my process for planning a game session. Not super complicated. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I'd love to, uh, you know, uh, talk with you more about it. And if you like what I'm doing here, please uh, like and subscribe and share with friends. And, uh, you know, that's kind of why I do this. So have a great one and have a great game night. 